Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. What does a mediocre outdoorsman, three shooting Cajun, and an actual outdoorsman have to say about what's going on in the world? Join us and find out in three, two, kick it! And you got to be careful when you're saying horror. Because it sounds like horror. Correct. All right. Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. I got, I'm your host this evening. I got in trouble in school for it. <laughs> for what? Saying whore, horror? Yeah, I called this chick an absolute horror, and she said I called her a horror. That's and, awful convenient. And I got, <laughs> I'm not joking either. <laughs> and I got detention over it. Oh, man. That is too funny. And my mom had to go talk to the principal. <laughs> H-O-R-R-O-R. Oh, man. I was like, you're an absolute horror of a woman. <laughs> In third grade. <laughs> third grade. Third grade. So you were like, how old? How old's my third grade? Seven? No. Nine year old? I forget, but I've always had a pretty good vocabulary. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. <laughs> I just remembered that when you said horror. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome again to the Hard Headed Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Trussell. This is evening or whatever time it is for you um so is that like so, something that people say nowadays when you're filming something like whatever time it is for you yeah i don't i don't know but i don't like it i don't like it either you know. because that's why i'm bringing it up yeah because i'm on a lot of international conference calls and they're like good morning good evening good afternoon yeah it's like That'll truman like, hey whatever everybody time. Good Whatever time it is good for you, and yeah. welcome. And Hello. Good night. Yeah. Hello. I'm genuinely excited that we're able to be together right now. Anyway, with me as always is Mr. Chet Sears and Mr. Matt Amos. Uh, on this episode, we're going to, Chet is going to bring us a good word at the end. We're going to do top three death scenes in a movie. I'm interested to hear everybody's take on that. I, I bet we're going to have a. We're going to get the same. Of all the death, the dying that's ever happened in a movie, I bet we're going to at least have one in common. I went with the three that stuck with me the most. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then we're going to start off with what is on Matt's mind. So, Matt, take it away. What's what's happening? So, uh, recently I've been doing a lot of shopping around for um, a project that I've been working on which is a 1977 C10 Chevy. And uh, as a part of that, you know, the the, uh, the benefit of having that vehicle is that there are so many options for parts and everything's just so easily available. There's just a ton of stuff out there. So I've, I've kind of turned into a Facebook marketplace uh, shopper. <laughs> so I'll type in. You've always done some of that. Yeah, but I, not to this because not to this extent. Um, and so you know, I get on. I'm searching, you know, because you can find tons of stuff, and you know, and, and narrow it down, and and I it almost feels to me like some of these people just do not want to sell their stuff. Oh, I would agree. My wife does a lot of this, or used to do a lot of this. She got so fed up with the people. Uh, like saying they were going to meet her and not showing up right. or uh, people just, what, what do they do if they're next in line? They, they type something in that's next in line. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I can't remember the phrase, but then people would like say they wanted it. And then at the last second, they're like, Oh no, I changed my mind. Or it, when there's like 10 other people down the row, like, ah, it's just so frustrating. Right. So what if, what if I'm one of those 10 people that's in line or, you know, let's just say that there's no line and I'm calling you or I'm messaging you about your product. What would your response be? Like, like Troy, Troy, let's say that you've got this nice uh, camera lens that's just sitting right there. Yeah. You're selling that. Okay. You've got it posted. And I, I ask you, Hey, I'm interested in, uh, in that camera lens there. Is uh, it available? No, I never ask, is it available? How much is it? If it's, those two questions are posted, but if I'm no, asking No, 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 but that's, people are still going to ask it. Yeah. People are going to ask me. it regardless of what's in the right. What's the lowest you'll go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Will you deliver it? I've asked, I've asked that myself. Yeah. Yeah. All legitimate questions, right? How would you answer those? Listed in the description. What if it's not? Then I'd answer it. I would, would just, you? or I'd update the description. I would just answer the question if it wasn't in the description. Yeah. Okay. And what if it was in the description and somebody was just, uh, wanted to get, you know, didn't, didn't look real close and said, Hey, I'm interested in, in this. Can you tell me more about it? Like how much is this, you know, whatever, what would your response be? I'd probably just copy and paste the description. Would you say, uh, here it is, dumbass? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> Did somebody do that to you? Because you're doing what? I'm trying to sell something. You're trying to sell something. You need to be it. nice to the customer. The customer's right. always right. I want their money. Yeah. This is what I'm getting at. Yeah. I can't tell you the amount of people that I've asked because they either did not take good pictures. I can't tell because, you know, a lot of these products are Missouri, Oklahoma, or uh, Colorado. So I've got to put in drive time. I've got to put in windshield time to come look at it. So I would like some better pictures and a better explanation before I drive all that way to come <laughs> look at something. So if I say, hey, are the, uh, are the struts on the bed of this pickup? you know, the, the support, the bed supports on the underside, are they, are they good or are they rusted out? Well, you can see in the picture, I go, no, you've got a picture of the top sides, both. I, I, I want a picture of the bottom side. So I know before I drive four and a half hours, if the bottom side of that is good or if it's rusted out. Right. Well, how about you just come down here and look at it? <laughs> I'm like, and then, and then get into my time. He told me that his time was valuable. Like I, I'm not going to go take a picture of that because my time's valuable. I was like, but my time is valuable as well. I'm, I'm the guy that's going to have to drive four and a half hours to come look at this thing. And then if it's not what I want, then I've, I've wasted eight hours of my time. Yeah. Nine. So whatever, nine. Yeah. Math. I'm not a math guy. <laughs> he, is, he had good vocabulary when he was younger. Not oh, good not math. Yeah. math. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or, you know, they, but they, but they are so inconvenienced to answer the simplest of questions. I don't care if 3000 people have messaged you the same thing. If you're legitimately trying to sell that, you would answer that 3000 times. Yeah. Or, or update your posting with the answer to that question. If you get, yeah, just get more yeah. detailed in your description so that it's all right there. Yeah. And then say at the end of that, if you have any other questions not covered in this description, feel free to ask. Yeah. But I also know that there are a bunch of idiots out there asking dumb questions. So I get I get questions I, on my food food posts sometimes. Like, where is this? It's in the description. Or how much was this? Or Yeah. You know, it's usually all in the description. But I'll answer it again. Right. One, it's good for engagement. But yeah. Two, I just Oh, I'm I'm a nice guy, I guess. I guess. But maybe he had like fifteen non nice people and then you came in and he just he was already triggered. I mean, it could be. And what's what's funny is uh, our our conversation. Uh, I go back to look. He deleted all of it up until the point, like right on, man. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> so I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. So tell our listeners what, what, so what it, went it, down. So it turns out that we we it, like we're like peas in a pod, right? Like we're two very similar individuals. And so I'd, I'd, I'd asked this guy about some truck beds and I was like, well, I can't see the bottom of them. Uh, can you, you know, tell me, and, and I've only asked three questions up to this point. I was like, are they still there? Are they for this year? And then are there, uh, do you have, cause on the, the C10, you have dual tanks and then you have a single tank and then you have square holes, you have round holes. And I was like, I need dual round holes is what I was originally looking for. And he goes, well, you can tell from the picture. I'm like, no, I, I can't. I was like, that's why I'm asking. Like, I, I just need some better pictures. You only got three or four pictures here. And I go, there's two different beds. So I'm really only getting, uh, you know, and I'm not sure which one's which because they're all painted different colors and you know, it's not all perfect. The same, yeah. And so, uh, I wish I could, it, it, it was deleted up to that point. So I wish I could read it cause I can't remember exactly what was said. You were like, he was like, come down here and look for yourself. It, yeah. Basically, you know, with some colorful language <laughs> intermingled in there. And, uh, and I said, well, uh, how 
I can't remember, but it, it got down to what you come down and cause uh, yeah, my time, he, he gave you a dollar amount on his worth, his time. And my time's worth like $170 an hour. Yeah. Something like that. You know, he, he, he like threw out a dollar. Wow. Like, so if you want me to go out there, it's costing me 170 bucks to go out there and take another picture. Cause I, my time is valuable. Right. Yeah. My time's this valuable, you know? And I was like, so, you know, of course at that point, you know, you go to the profile and you look and I'm like, you know, who am I dealing with here? Is this guy even legit? You know? Right. And I see that he's, he's, he's a mechanic. I'm like, okay. So like, he's got, you know, these parts, whatever. And, and, uh, so then, uh, he said something about his time being really valuable and blah, blah, blah. And basically at that point I'm thinking, well, now you're devaluing my time. Like, cause you're wasting my um, time at I, this point. Yeah. Me going out and taking a picture is more valuable than you driving nine hours. Right. So you're so I, and then I was like, okay, mechanic, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Just to jab, jab it in there. Right. And, uh, and then he comes back and he goes, yeah, okay, Marine, you know, and then, uh, you know, started making it. He goes, now I do appreciate your service, but, <laughs> and then I hate uh, your guts. You know, fool. <laughs> and he's like, I tell you, I tell you what, why don't you, uh, why don't you come down here? And, uh, he goes, we'll fight. And he goes, if I win, I pick the bed and 750 bucks. He goes, if you win, you pick the bed for free. And I was like, well, I don't have any legs, so you win. And then he goes, oh, I feel like a dick. You know? <laughs> so, I, so I threw I threw the no legs thing out there, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, we're, it's like it, it, the whole conversation changed. And it was like, he's like, yeah, man. He goes, you know, I just got so many tire kickers and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I get it, man. I go, but you're trying to sell something, you know, and I'm asking questions. I'm asking legitimate questions. I go, cause I'm legitimately interested. Yeah. I've got two people that can maybe come look at it tomorrow. I said, but I don't want to waste their time driving an hour and a half to you. I said, I'm four and a half hours away. Yeah. I said, I don't want to waste their time an hour and a half driving to come see you. If, if it's not going to work, cause I don't want to have a whole lot of metal work to do. So anyway, we, we ended up, you know, uh, laughing about it. I was like, you know, I was like a, Turns out, I was like, dude, we'd probably be pretty good friends in real life. Like, that, yeah. legitimately, I, it sounds like we got kind of a similar attitude. I said, but I typically wait until I know a person to start in like you did. But, <laughs> you know, it, so it, it ended up being kind of funny. But, I mean, it, and it, you know, so we ended up getting along. But I've had, I don't know how many times I've, I've clicked on a post or something like that. And it's it, the person's just being really rude in their description. Like, uh, I will do this. I won't do this. And don't be stupid and this and that. And it's like. You're trying to sell something on on Facebook Marketplace. It, well, uh, in the defense of the seller, not this seller, he's an idiot. The there are instances where you're selling like kids' clothes, and this is a size, you know, two right. old navy shirt, fifty cents. And then there, then somebody will reply back. Well, is it running on the big size of size two or the small size of size two? Like, don't ask that question. It's like 50 cents. Right. Yeah. Risk it. Just risk it. Yeah. Hey, uh, and that's and that's fine. But, you know, if they ask that question, say, hey, it's 50 cents. Come come check it out. Yeah. For 50 cents, you can find out yourself. But don't say it that way. Yeah. You're still trying. You're still trying to sell something. That's like me. <laughs> no, don't read it that way. I said I, it like, oh, for 50 cents. You'll know. You can come That's check fun. it you out. Check it out. <laughs> all, hey, all I'm saying is there, you're trying to sell something. Be, Everything is always read in a negative connotation. That's true. 100% it is. Yeah. Unless you do like Chet with his little social experiment, you put the little happy face there, which doesn't affect my mood. <laughs> yes, whatsoever. it does. It does. I did no. it. I did it today, didn't I? No, you didn't. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I did it. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That makes a huge difference. I don't Ladies think so. and gentlemen, you can throw out all kinds of insults and text messages to people that you know, and you just put one of those roly laughing emojis at the end of it, and people think you're kidding. Oh, I do it all the time. Ah! <laughs> now, no. I would, like my wife got more and more cynical the more she po- uh, sold stuff on Facebook Marketplace. So, uh, so her descriptions got more and more <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, just precise. come pick it up. I mean, I will not answer questions for anything less than anything marked below five dollars. I mean, yeah. What are you saying? So, uh, so here's here's a conversation with Chet. 
said, my box blade is 20 inches deep. It'd be full every 10 feet. And then you've got to pick up the excess and relocate it. And so then he gives me the eye rolling emoji. <laughs> I don't need your excuses. I followed that up with skid steer buckets hold four of my blade fulls and it'll make an even pass. And he goes, I'll just do it with a walk behind tiller and a shovel since your tractor is trash. Then he does laughing emojis. Because <laughs> I, I still need his tractor. But then I, I, tell, then I tell him, I was like, based on the scale of that area, good luck, bud. <laughs> didn't change your mind. Uh, and then I give him a Biden. Come on, man. Come on, Come man. Come on, man. Oh, man. But, I, you know, I, again, I mean, it just comes back to you're trying to sell something. Um, you know, be a good salesperson. Be a good steward of, of your product. You know, I mean. Don't overvalue it. Yeah. You're not the only one out there because, you know, if I've dealt with you for so long and then I don't get a good feeling, because a lot of that is just feeling a person out, you know, before you go meet with somebody, Yeah, you know, to buy something. Hey, what do I, what do I feel from this person who's that I'm texting back and forth with? Like, so I ended up uh, because that guy, um, that same guy uh, wouldn't, didn't respond to me for a day and a half. And I was like, I'm kind of, looking this weekend because I got some guys down there that want to go look, you know, mm -hmm. so, and I'm not working out. So I, uh, or he didn't get back to me in time. So, um, I ended up finding another one and this guy is actually going to, uh, do all the body work, sand it, put both square holes on. Cause I ended up just doing the square holes and getting it paint ready. And he, he's actually going to trade me the bed that's on my truck. So, Plus, I'm I'm paying him a little bit of cash on on top of that for the body work that he's doing. Yeah, but I mean, this dude's like super communicative, and it, he's probably going to stiff me. Watch, but because yeah. <laughs> I then we'll podcast about that. Yeah, because yeah. I I, that. I sent him the check. I sent him a check for five hundred bucks to to buy supplies and get all the stuff started and all that, you know. And and uh, but the communication with him, I just got a really good feeling from him. You know, he's mm -hmm. been doing it for a long time, and he goes. Yeah, he goes, I do all the body work and I weld it up and sand down, get it paint ready for you. And, and uh, you know, everything's thanks, buddy. Sure, buddy. You know, yeah. well, I just got a good feeling from the guy. So I was like, ah, if it doesn't work out, he got 500 bucks. He probably needed it more than I did at the point anyway that he's ripping people off. So we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't happen. All right. Well, stay tuned. And we'll see if it happens. See if you get stiffed or not. We'll see. We'll know shortly. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with our top three death scenes in a movie. At Admiral's Pennant, our mission is to offer the latest and refined, high-quality masculine products and services to the modern gentleman, as well as provide him with the tools and products necessary to look, act, and feel confident in his appearance and social interactions. Check it out at admiralspennant.com. Without it, you might as well share. And we are back. We are back. All right, top three things, or sorry, top three death scenes in a movie. Chet. Chet. Um, I've got an honorable mention that I'll get to as well, um, but it, and it's not going to be on your guys' list. Number if th three. If there is anything from Red Dawn on this list. Number three. <laughs> Captain Miller, Saving Private Ryan. That's Tom Hanks' character. The earn this speech. Yeah. That's a good one. It's a good one. That is a good one. Number two. Matt doesn't know about this. Boromir. When he's fighting the Urukai. Yep. And gets all those arrows. What? Shot in him. It's a good one. Um, and it's in uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship oh, of the Ring. That's what, yeah. The actual death scene right after that of the Urukai that gets his head chopped off yeah. where he pulls the sword, pulls himself Dude, through that the sword. Is that's a pretty sick death scene. They right like there. stuck. He's like the good guy, like stuck the bad guy, and the bad guy grabs a sword and pulls the guy in closer. Like, yeah, that was done in another movie. Yeah, because Braveheart is copying all this kind of no, stuff. No, Braveheart was way before this. Not the books. Not the books, but the books didn't show that pulling the blade. Uh, the books talk Have about it. Have you read it. the book? Good no. grief. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number one, Daryl Bates. He's the mayor's son in Red Dawn who <laughs> swallowed who swallowed the tracker. How'd I know? And uh, uh, you went off and got caught. And, you know, Patrick Swayze, he's going to execute him, but he can't do it. 
because he's his friend, but he betrayed everybody and led the, the Russian army straight to him. And the, But they ended up surviving the trap. And Daryl, I mean, and Patrick Swayze couldn't do it. Old Jed, he couldn't do it. So what, what happened? <laughs> Robert stepped up. T-R-B-T-T-G. Three-round burst to the gut. Brought him down. And that's when you know it's real. Like, oh, that's, that was a heavy moment in the movie. <laughs> it's, it's just hard to top that. And then uh, honorable mention, uh, I, I think one of Clint Eastwood's best directorial performances is in a movie called A Perfect World with Kevin Costner who kidnaps this kid. Uh, he broke out of jail, kidnaps a kid, ends up becoming a father figure to the kid while they're running from the law. And the, the, the Texas Ranger that's hunting him down is Clint Eastwood. Anyway, the end of that movie, Clint Eastwood is trying. He felt guilty. There's a whole long story here, but he felt guilty about sending uh, the Kevin Costner character to juvie when he was a kid. Uh, to try to get him scared straight to get back on the track, but he went into he, he uh, ended up going instead of going to juvenile court, he got him going into prison prison or something, and he he learned how to be even worse. So Eastwood felt bad because he pushed him down this road. So he's wanting to bring him back alive, but then there's these other cops that want to kill him, and he ended up killing him at the end. And it dude, it wrecked me when I was watching that movie. So that's another good one. All right. Matt, tell, what you tell got? Tell me I can't have Red Dawn in my top three. Hey, you I, knew it was coming. I knew, I, I knew something was coming. I could have done top three Red Dawn deaths. There's some good ones in here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, number three. It's tough. It's almost a tie, but I'm going to go with Braveheart. Mm-hmm. Freedom. 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 All right. As he's got his guts being pulled out and then being decapitated. Yeah. Pretty. That's a, that's a pretty, powerful pretty, one. Pretty gory death. Yeah. Uh, and then number two, one that stuck with me for a while, and I, I, I don't know why I always kind of think about it, uh, when the uh, last of the Mohicans, mm. when the girl mm. just uh, commits suicide, she jumps, jumps over the cliff. Yeah. Instead of going with the natives. Yeah, he's like. He's like. Yeah. And she, nope. And they got that 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 theme song that plays throughout the whole movie. They've I, had, got I had that soundtrack. They've got it playing. Yeah. She jumps. The other girl screams and turns away. Pretty epic scene in a movie. That's an epic movie. It is. Yeah. It is. And the whole, like, when I'm trying to, because I, I know the scene, right? And. All day, I kept thinking Dances with Wolves. And so I'm like, what? I'm trying to think when it happened in Dances with Wolves. And I'm, I'm like, it's not even the right movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, number one, uh, The Passion. Mm. Uh, that crucifixion scene that, uh, um, and I'm drawing a blank on his name. Jim Caviezel. That's right. Caviezel. Put on makes that movie one of the greatest movies I've ever seen, but it also makes it the movie that's hardest to watch because it's so incredibly real. Yeah. Oh, hands down. I didn't, that didn't make my list because the whole movie is his torture and death scene. Yeah. <laughs> like it's the whole movie. Uh, Mel Gibson's got a sequel. Yep. Coming out The Resurrection. Is it really coming out? Because yeah. he's been trying to make this movie. No, I'm, I'm for, pretty sure it's like close to being in production kind of thing. I think he's been saying that for like 10 years. We'll maybe, see. Maybe. I don't know. But it's on the internet. so I will true. say. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is not false if it's on the internet. Strong. Runners up. Okay. 300. When uh, they're talking about the uh, the. The arrows there'll be enough to black, black out, out the sky, sun, and then it happens. And oh, black like, out the sun, yeah, yeah. Then we'll fight in the shade, and then as they're dying, you know, yeah, we're gonna fight in the shade, and just the whole way that the Spartan death was, mm -hmm. is always an honorable 
yeah. you know, come back with your shield or on it, you know, just their fighting society way, even though they're a bunch of gays, basically. There could be a sequel to that. There has been. Has Our, there been? Yeah. yeah. They're on, on boats. Was it Zack Snyder? Did he do it? Yep. Yeah, pretty sure. It's out. Uh, 300. Uh, uh, well, I just listened to his interview on uh, on uh, Joe Rogan, and he had, he didn't talk about a sequel. He talked about maybe doing more in-depth sequel to 300. I'd, I'd watch that. I think the, uh, so like the Gates of Fire, it, you know, when you're talking about books, I mean, that's an incredible book. And I think I've talked about it before, about it being uh, on the uh, Commandant's reading list as, you know, re- like required reading for Marines. Um, but it's, it's an incredible book. Yeah. Rise of an empire. Yeah. Rise of an empire. But by I, not gnome Muro was who was directed by screenplay by Zack Snyder. Hmm. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. When did it come out? A long time ago. Uh, 2014, 10 years ago. Uh, maybe he was talking about a prequel. I don't know. He was was talking about doing more and going in depth into the more, the nature of all the gayness and stuff in the actual army that made him what he thinks so powerful. Nobody, nobody wants to see that. Well, I mean, yeah, we don't, but Uh, this took the, in the timeline of historical events, this took place before, um, 300. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it would have to, because they're all dead. Well, it's not the same characters. I'm just yeah. saying story story wise, but yeah. Anyway, all right, yeah. So my top three. I mean, it would be kind speaking, of uh, speaking of that's uh, Xerxes in the Book of Esther in the Bible. That the 300, yep. like takes place during that time during the Book of Esther timeline. What a wild time to live! It would have been, yeah. Um, yeah. So number three for me. Uh, Resident Evil, the first one. There's a, like eight or nine of them now. Either one of it's y'all ever like see that? Just like Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah, they I've just, probably they seen just keep it, but, I, but I've only seen it once and I don't remember. The laser scene. So they get, there's four of them. They get trapped in this like hallway that closes off and these lasers start. They're in cubes, like they're squares of lasers. No, one, well, that's what happens at the end, very end of the scene. Yeah. So one laser scene, comes yeah. up and chops an arm off or chops a hand off. And then another one slices somebody's head off. And then the last one, he's like jumping over him and you think he's going to escape. And then it turns to a grid and goes right through him. And man, when I saw that, I was like, that stuck with me for days. Watch out for lasers. Watch out for lasers. Yeah. It was, uh, Pretty wild. Uh, number two, Moran McClanaugh, the wife of William Wallace oh. in Braveheart. So when she got murdered, that stuck with me, and that set him off. Then he murdered like all of them. He so murdered that dude like he like she got murdered. Exactly. Yeah, he got his revenge real quick on him. Uh, and then number one, Private Stanley Fish Milesh in Saving Private Ryan. He's the one that got stabbed. That's disturbing. He's the one that got stabbed with the bayonet. In the room? Yeah. When they were hand-to-hand combat forever? Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Dude. Putting the bayonet in his throat? Yep. Or his chest? His chest. Yep. That's, that stuck with me forever. The sweat coming off the forehead as he's... Yeah. yeah. That scene, like forever, stays yeah. with me. That was a powerful, powerful scene. That's two so, from Saving Private Ryan, and two from Braveheart. Yeah, crazy. Bra- Braveheart. I mean, that's one of my all-time favorite movies. Anyway, a lot of a lot of good death scenes in that movie. I remember when it was on two VHS tapes because it was so long. Yeah. Yep. All cool. right, Chet. Good word. Uh, so the Apostle Paul 
towards the end of his life and he had a uh, uh, widely talked about death on being beheaded in Rome uh, as he was nearing the end of his life and knew that that outcome, scholars believe he knew that outcome was, was imminent, he wrote his second letter to Timothy. And in chapter 4, I'm going to start in verse 6, it says he's encouraging him, uh, Timothy. He says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So whenever that death scene comes for us all, may we be in the position to say, I've fought the good fight and I've finished the race. Because I've seen in my short time on young time on this earth, because I'm not really that old, guys. Um, Closer to 50 than I am. You know, you, you see... <laughs> You see a lot of folks, uh, that finishing part, um, and just, some people just don't continue. And I think it's really important for us, all of us to realize that and to know that our goal isn't just to be in the word now and, you know, spiritually active now, but to go all the way to the end and to be able to say, I finished the race. I fought the whole time. And not just uh, going to some kind of spiritual retirement at some point in the future to, to finish all the way through. And then, so when that time comes, hopefully it's not a beheading. Um, but when that time comes, we could, we could face it and say, yeah, I've done it. I've done it right. I've done it well. I'm ready. Yep. It's good. Thank you, Chip. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.